Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Joy of Puzzles. Today I have for you part two of the blaze, blazing with color. That's a little bit of a no misnomer in this case because I am building the puzzle upside down. Strangely enough, uh, if you watched the previous video that I'll put a link up to, I express how much I enjoyed making this puzzle and uh, how I would actually recommend people to buy it, which is uncommon for me. But while I was building it the first time, I noticed that the back of the puzzle also had an image on it, which is very uncommon. And in this case, it was letters A through I laid out in a grid pattern. So I decided I was going to build it upside down. Um, so Blazing with Color, published in 2020 by the Hanley Toys Company. Hanley Toys is part of Toy Town, which was established in China in 2006. Now, they claim they are known for, and I'll quote, superior quality and innovative jigsaw puzzles, unquote. And I'm going to agree, at least the one example I have of their work is actually quite superior to lots of puzzles I currently own. So, they're not really bragging. They're, uh, they do a great job. And I think the secret is the image on both sides of the puzzle really improves the quality of the paperboard. Uh, it's something that, if I knew a puzzle like this was out there with a double laminated, I would stick to those primarily because it just makes the build much more enjoyable, much easier. Uh, it's all, all in all a, a great, great puzzle. So. Hunley Toys, back to them, um, in addition to their puzzles, they make lots of children toys, educational toys, in particular in the U.S. they would be known for the manufacturers behind the Nickelodeon brand. Um, I'll include a link to the puzzle, the manufacturer. Here we have a guest appearance by Shadow. Shadow is my Yorkie poodle. She is five years old and she actively, uh, well I won't say participates in the puzzle builds on a regular basis, but she is often in the area at my feet and she is very much a lap dog, so glad to have her stop by. She stops by again at the end of the build, about eight minutes in or eight and a half minutes, something like that. Uh, so back to the puzzle. It is a thousand piece puzzle and I won't say that there's an artist, especially for this side. I suspect the reason for the dual laminate is more for manufacturing purposes, some sort of uh, alignment tool so that they know the paper as it passes over the blades is correctly oriented, probably being checked with a, a, a high-speed camera, something like that. But uh, I appreciate it. It makes for a great puzzle. So, the, the hue side of this puzzle was a quick build. For a thousand piece puzzle, it was just under four hours, which is really fast. Um, it's practically in lines with the 500 piece puzzle. And that was just the nature of the image. Now, this is the exact opposite as far as the nature of the image goes. Uh, the letters are oriented in one direction, so it, it does lend itself to pulling out one section at a time and building it. So the strategy was find all the transition pieces between each letter sequence. Try to build those first. Well, I kind of failed at that. I could I could string some of it together, but you know, the gap between say like E and F, it's pretty hard to tell when you only have partial letters there if you actually have a piece that is the blend. Uh, there was a slight hint in that the, as you see it starting to form here, there is a slightly larger gap between each quadrant. So sometimes you could get the hint on a piece that it was actually, a, I'll call it a boundary piece, an interior boundary piece. Um, the interesting thing about this was because every piece was, the orientation is known, it built very differently than the other side of the puzzle. The puzzle you were much more focused on a color and you make this big pinwheel of a design and, and you stayed 
your, your attention stayed centered in that respect. In this case, he, I didn't even notice when I built it the other way that there was a pattern to the way the pieces are cut. Um, it was a repetitive pattern, so I, by the end, recognized that, oh, this boundary is going to contain all of this style piece. Uh, so it was kind of a interesting thing to note, and I understand how that happens and why on the other side you simply don't see it because you're not approaching it from uh, such a linear perspective as you are when you're building it like this. Um, so it was more of a challenge to myself to do this because I thought it would be interesting and it was interesting um, and also because the puzzle quality is so good I didn't mind it. Um, though my son did refuse to participate he thought I lost my mind uh, attempting to do this but I, I for for an eight eight hours and fifteen minutes or so, I yeah, I actually really enjoyed this. It was not any moments of I'm coming down here and going, oh goodness, I have to finish this thing. Uh, the only letter that was even remotely challenging was the letter I because there is no orientation. It's just a line, so every piece had basically two orientations it could be in, other than if you could detect by the shape of the piece its orientation. So I'll jump through the review pretty quick here because the image isn't much to look at and I already reviewed this in great detail on the, uh, the part one of this puzzle. So paper material quality, solid four. It may be a five. This one, again, in a year I might look back and go, you know what, that was the best puzzle I built quality-wise. So I'm going to call it a four, but it's pretty darn close to a five. Next after that is the puzzle cut quality. This is also superior, also easily a four. The pieces all fit clean, precise. The, the dual laminate of the construction made the pieces um, clean. The, the cut was great, so it's one of the reasons I was willing to take this on in, in this kind of orientation. The difficulty, on the other hand, this one jumps to a three, doing it on the back side. Maybe a four for some people. Um, there was enough hints and tricks in here that I wouldn't call it a four. I didn't, I didn't dread any of it. It's just a lot more time consuming than the other side, but very enjoyable. Frameability. Uh, you know what? I'll give it a three because you hang this in your house and people are going to ask you a lot of questions about <laughs> what the heck did you build here uh, and why is it hanging here? So. I'll give it a 3 for frameability just because it's kind of unique and draws the eye in a, in a, in a, in a different way. Um, before I get to my overall rating, well, I'll just say it now, it's a 4. We have another guest appearance of Shadow, Shadow the Puzzle Pup. She will uh, appear for just a couple seconds here and roam around on the puzzle and, and give, it its, give it her stamp of approval. Uh, and maybe tip over a piece or two and, <laughs> and uh, torture me in any way she can. But that's, that's the joy of owning uh, such an adorable little lap dog as Shadow. Uh, yes, so bye Shadow. She will, she will appear again in puzzles in the future. Uh, if, if you don't know, this one blazing with color is something you can buy on Amazon readily and I would recommend it. In the video here I did attempt to zoom in to show you the pattern of the letters but the camera simply doesn't have the resolution to to let you see how it all lays out on a grid there. Uh, you'll just have to trust me. So as we come to the video I'm gonna say if you like the video uh, you like my monologue that goes with it, please go ahead and click the like button. I appreciate all you folks out there that actually take the time to sit through these videos and uh, <laughs> in a way participate in my hobby slash obsession. Uh, again, thanks very much. Uh, I, I appreciate it.